Hello everyone. So, in last lecture we considered slug flow where axial velocity remained constant. Today we will consider hydrodynamically and thermally fully developed flow with constant or uniform wall heat flux boundary condition. So, it is the velocity profile we have already derived for a fully developed condition earlier for two different channels one is parallel plate channel and circular pipe. In today's lecture we will consider these two types of channel first we will consider flow through parallel plate channel then we will consider circular pipe. So, first let us consider the assumptions we will consider two dimensional steady incompressible laminar flow with constant properties. Two dimensional we are considering that means in the third direction it is infinite. So, there will be no change or no gradient in that direction. So, obviously, we will consider for flow through parallel plate channel x as the axial direction and y we will measure from the center line. You can see this is the two infinite parallel plates channel. We have the velocity profile which is fully developed and u is function of y only. x is the axial direction and y is measured from the center line and uniform wall heat flux is imposed on both walls. For this particular case you can see that your wall temperature will vary in axial direction. So, T w is function of x and these two plates are separated by a distance to h. So, hydrodynamically fully developed flow. So, in this particular case you know that del u by del x is 0 and v is 0. Thermally fully developed flow. So, we have this non dimensional temperature which we defined as T w minus T divided by T w minus T m where T w is the wall temperature and T m is the mean temperature. So, if it is a thermally fully developed flow then we can write del phi by del x is 0 because axial variation of this phi will be 0. Uniform wall heat flux condition. So, Q double prime w is constant and we will have negligible viscous heat dissipation that means, phi will be 0 and no internal heat generation. Okay. So, Q triple prime is equal to 0. Considering this assumptions let us write the energy equation. So, what is your energy, energy equation in for steady laminar flow in two dimensions? So, you can write energy equation So, u del t by del x plus v del t by del y is equal to alpha into del to t by del x square plus del to t by del y square. Okay. Neglecting the viscous heat dissipation and uh, internal heat generation. So, this is your energy equation. We will simplify invoking those assumptions now. First of all let us write the fully developed velocity profile. So, what is the fully developed velocity profile for this particular case? Fully developed velocity profile. Okay. So, in this particular case you know that u which is function of y is 3 by 2 into u m where u m is the mean velocity into 1 minus y square by h square. Now, we know for constant heat flux boundary condition del t by del x is equal to d t m by d x and that is also constant. So, for uniform wall heat flux condition okay, you know that del t by del x equal to d t m by d x 
we have already derived it in earlier classes. So, d t m by d x is equal to q double prime w p divided by m dot c p. Okay. So, where p is the perimeter m dot is the mass flow rate and you can see for this particular case q double prime w is constant for a constant cross sectional channel p is constant m dot is constant and c p is specific it that is also constant. So, this will be constant. Now, if you take derivative with respect to x then you can write del 2 t by del x square. So, as it is constant it will be 0. So, you can see that in the diffusion term you can actually write del 2 t by del x square is equal to 0. Okay. So, now you invoke all the assumptions and write the energy equation. So, this is your axial heat conduction is 0. Okay. So, axial heat conduction for this particular case it will be 0 and fully developed flow. So, V is equal to also 0. So, you can see that V is 0 and this is 0. So, your equation now you can write as U del T by del X because V is 0 for fully developed flow and axial heat conduction is 0. So, this is 0. So, you can write alpha into del 2 t by delta y square. Now, putting these values as 3 by 2 okay, u m alpha I am taking in the left hand side. So, u m by alpha d t m by d x into 1 minus y square by h square is equal to del 2 t by del y square. Okay. So, now let us find the term left hand side u n by alpha d t m by d x. Okay. So, what is what is the value of this? So, u m is the mean velocity alpha is k by rho c p okay. d t m by d x is q double prime w into p in this particular case p is your 2 into 1 okay, per unit width. So, if you consider in third direction unit width then it will be 2 into 1 divided by your m dot. So, m dot is rho u m into area. So, area flow area is 2 h into 1. Okay, so, 2 h I will write divided by C p. Okay, so, now if you simplify it then rho rho C p C p will get cancelled u m u m will get cancelled this 2 2 will get cancelled. So, you can write this as q double prime w by k h. Okay. So, now you can write del 2 t by del y square is equal to 3 q double prime w divided by 2 k h into 1 minus y square by h square. Okay. So, now this equation we will integrate twice and we will apply the boundary condition then we will find the temperature distribution inside these parallel plates. So, integrating you will get del t by del y is equal to 3 q double prime w by twice k h okay into now if you are integrating so it will be y minus y cube by 3 h square okay plus constant c 1 okay which may be function of x and again if you integrate then you will get t which is function of x y will be 3 q double prime w by twice k h so, this will be y square by 2 minus y to the power 4 by 4. So, 4 into 3 will be 12, 12 h square plus c 1 y plus c 2 also will be function of x. Now, we will apply two boundary conditions and find this constant c 1 and c 2. So, one boundary condition is that 
at y is equal to 0 which is your center line ok. So, your temperature gradient with respect to y del t by del y will be 0 because the problem is thermally and geometrically symmetric. So, the maximum or minimum temperature will occur at the center line ok. So, at y is equal to 0 we will put del t by del y is equal to 0 and another boundary condition will take that at the wall temperature as T w which is function of x. So, at y is equal to h you have T w. So, boundary conditions so at y is equal to 0 ok we will put del T by del y is equal to 0 ok. So, you can see from this equation ok if you put y is equal to 0 then this right hand side first term will become 0. So, del T by del y left hand side is also 0. So, C 1 will be 0 and at y is equal to h we will put T as T w which is function of x ok. So, if you put that so you will get T w mm. here I am not writing function of x only T w I am writing here. So, 3 q double prime w by twice k h into h square by 2 minus h to the power 4 by 12 h square c 1 is 0 and c 2. So, you can see that your c 2 will be T w ok which is function of x ok and this will be. So, h square you can take it outside. So, minus 3 q double prime w by twice k h into. So, h square if you take outside, so it will be half minus 1 by 12. So, it will be 5 by, so it will be 5 by 12 ok. So, if you rearrange it, so you will get c 2 is equal to t w. So, it will be 4 ok and this 1 h will get cancelled. So, you can write it as T w minus 5 by 8 q double prime w h by k. So, now let us put this constant in the temperature distribution and find the temperature distribution T x y. So, T x y will be just 3 q double prime w by twice k h into y square by 2 minus y to the power 4 by 12 h square plus T w minus 5 by 8 q double prime h by k ok. So, if you rearrange it in this form, so you, you can write T x y ok is equal to T w ok which is function of x minus 5 by 8 q double prime w h by k you take outside ok. So, you can write inside the bracket as 1 minus 6 by 5 y square by h square plus 1 by 5 y to the power 4 by h to the power 4 ok. So, now I can also write this as T w minus T x y as 5 by 8 q double prime w h by k 1 minus 6 by 5 y square by h square plus 1 by 5 y to the power 4 by h to the power 4 ok. So, this is the temperature distribution along the y and also it is function of x and y because T w is function of x. Now, at the center y is equal to 0 ok. So, what will be the temperature? Center line temperature T c. So, it will be either maximum or minimum temperature depending on what is the inlet temperature. Uh, uh, so, let us write the center line temperature as at y is equal to 0 T is equal to T c which is your center line temperature. Okay. So, you can write T w 
minus T C okay, which will also will be function of x 5 by 8. So, you are putting y is equal to 0 right. So, these two terms will become 0. So, it will be just q double prime w h by k. Okay. Now, we can just divide this equation with this equation then what you will get T w x minus T x y divided by T w x minus T c x. Okay. So, you can write as 1 minus 6 by 5 y square by h square plus 1 by 5 y to the power 4 by h to the power 4. So, you can see that we have retained this temperature distribution in non dimensional form because we are dividing with T w minus T c where T c is the central line temperature and right side you can see this is also non dimensional. So, this is the temperature distribution. Now, to find the heat transfer coefficient we need to find what is the mean temperature because we need to define the Nusselt number based on the difference between the wall temperature and the mean temperature. So, first let us find what is the mean temperature. So, mean temperature you can find T m x as 1 by m dot where m dot is the mass flow rate integral over the area rho u t d a. Okay. So, if you consider uh, from the center line one small elemental flow area of distance d y at a distance y from the center line okay. and in other direction if you take a unit width then it will be d a will be d y into 1 okay. d y into 1 and the total flow area will be 2 h into 1. Okay. So, this if you write then you will get 1 by m naught. So, it will be rho into u m into area. So, area is 2 h. Okay. Now, you integrate from minus h to h rho u is the velocity profile which is 3 by 2 u m into 1 minus y square by h square into t. So, now t we have already written. So, it will be T w minus 5 by 8 q double prime w h by k 1 minus 6 by 5 y square by h square plus 1 by 5 y to the power 4 by h to the power 4 into d y. Okay. So, d i is your d y. So, you can see here you can this u m u m rho rho you can cancel and you can write this integral 0 to h. So, 3 by 2 you can take it outside and this integral you can write 0 to h. So, you can write 2 by 2 h 0 to h. Okay. So, now you can see 1 minus y square by h square that this term will multiply with T w as well as this term. So, first let us multiply with T w. So, T w into 1 minus y square by h square. Okay. So, this is the multiplication with T w then we will get minus 5 by 8 q double prime w h by k. Okay. Now, first you multiply this whole term with the 1. So, what you will get? 1 minus 6 by 5 y square by h square plus 1 by 5 y to the power 4 by h to the power 4. Okay. And this minus y square by h square whatever we have here. So, that you multiply with this term. So, what you will get? So, it is minus y square by h square. So, minus y square by h square then minus minus plus 6 by 5 y to the power 4 by h to the power 4 okay. and again minus 1 by 5 y to the power 6 by h to the power 6 okay, into dy. So, now it will be 
easy to integrate ok. So, if you cancel it to 2, so you can write 3 by 2 h ok. Now, we will integrate and put the limit ok. So, we will integrate with respect to y and then we will put the limit 0 to h. So, 0 if you put then it will be 0. So, that uh, we will not write, but we will put y is equal to h and write the integral ok. So, what will be this? So, it will be T w ok. Then what will be the integration? It will be y minus y cube by 3 h square ok minus 5 by 8 q double prime w h by k. Then this will be y minus 6 by 5 y cube by 3 h square ok plus 1 by 5 y to the power 5 by 5 h to the power 4 ok minus y cube by 3 h square plus 6 by 5. So, it will be y to the power 5 by h to the power 4 ok. Then minus 1 by 5 y to the power 7 by 7 h to the power 6 ok. So, after integration we have written this, but we need to put the limit from 0 to h ok. So, if you see y is equal to 0 if you put all terms will become 0 only h you put then what you will get 3 by 2 h ok. So, T w. So, I am putting h. So, it will be h cube by h square. So, that will be h. So, this h and 1 minus 1 by 3. Similarly, you can put the value of y as h, then you can write, you can see. So, everywhere if you put y is equal to h, then here h, it is will be h cube by h square. So, it will be h. Similarly, y to the power 7 by h to the power 6. So, h to the power 7 by h to the power 6 will be h. So, h I am taking, h I am taking outside and we will write 1 minus 6 by 15, ok. Then 1 by 25 minus 1 by 3 plus 6 by so, here 5 is missing ok y to the power 5 by 5 h to the power 4. So, it will be 6 by 25 minus 1 by 35 ok. So, now if you see so you can write you multiply with 3 by 2 h ok. So, 3 by 2 h t w into h it will be 2 by 3 it will be again 3 by 2 h 5 by 8 q double prime w h by k into h ok. So, this will be 525 ok in the denominator, numerator now you can see it will be 525 minus 210 plus 21 minus 175 plus 126 minus 15 ok. So, you can see this h h will get cancelled 2 2 3 3 ok. Here also h h will get cancelled. So, you can write it as T w which is function of x right minus ok 3 by 2 5 by 8 and this term you will get 272 divided by 525 ok and you will have q double prime w h by k. So, you can see uh, if you rearrange so you will get 8 into, so this will be 34, 2 it will be 17 and this 5 it will be 105, so it will be 
35. So, you will get it as T w x minus 17 by 35 ok q double prime w h by k ok. So, we have now represented the mean temperature which is function of x in terms of the wall temperature and the heat flux. So, from here now you can actually find the temperature difference between the wall temperature and the mean temperature. So, you can see you can write T w x minus T m x as 17 by 35 q double prime w h by k. Okay. So, now we need to calculate the heat transfer coefficient. Okay. So, heat transfer coefficient will be, so heat transfer coefficient is h is equal to q double prime w by T w minus T m. Okay. So, in earlier slide we have found what is T w x minus T m x. So, that is T w x minus T m x as 17 by 35 q double prime w h by k. Okay. So, you can see if you put it here. So, you will get q double prime w divided by 17 by 35 into q double prime w h by k. So, you can write it as h 35 by 17 k by h. Okay. So, now Nusselt number, so Nusselt number will calculate, Nusselt number will calculate based on the hydraulic diameter and the difference between wall temperature and the mean temperature. So, what is the hydraulic diameter already we have calculated for this particular geometry. So, that is your 4H right. So, 4H. So, based on 4H uh, we will calculate the Nusselt number. So, Nusselt number will be based on 4H and the difference between wall temperature and the mean temperature. So, H into 4H divided by K. Okay. So, H is 35 by 17 K by H into 4H by K. So, you can see H H will get cancelled. So, you will get Nusselt number based on 4H is equal to 35 into 4 by 17. So, that will be your 140 by 17. Okay. So, uh, Nusselt number 4H will be 8.235. So, you can see the Nusselt number for hydrodynamically and thermally fully developed flow, it is constant and independent of Reynolds number and Prandtl number. Now, let us consider hydrodynamically and thermally fully developed flow through circular pipe with uniform wall heat flux boundary condition. So, you can see this is your cross section of the circular pipe q double prime w is constant and r naught is the radius of this pipe, x is the axial direction, r is measured from the center line and we have uniform wall heat flux on the wall and velocity profile is parabolic u r and already we have derived it. So, T w in this particular case also will be varying in axial direction. So, T w will be function of x. So, you can see the assumptions in this particular case will take axisymmetric steady incompressible laminar flow with constant properties. So, what is axisymmetric flow? So, you can see that in if circumferential direction velocity is 0 and any gradient in that direction is 0 then it is axisymmetric flow. So, you can see in this particular case we have a circular pipe. So, uh, we have a solid wall and velocity obviously will be 0 in circumferential direction and your thermal boundary condition is also uniform over the wall. So, it is 
geometrically and thermally axisymmetric. So, we can have the assumption that your temperature will vary in r and x direction. Hydrodynamically fully developed flow, okay. so hydrodynamically fully developed flow means your del u by del x will be 0 and if v is the velocity in radial direction then v will be also 0. Thermally fully developed flow, so del phi by del x will be 0. Okay, where phi is the non dimensional temperature already we have defined as T w minus T divided by T w minus T m. Uniform wall heat flux condition, so Q double prime w will be 0 sorry for uniform wall heat flux condition Q double prime w will be constant. Negligible viscosity heat dissipation, so phi will be 0 no internal heat generation q triple prime is equal to 0. So, in cylindrical coordinate now let us write the energy equation. So, energy equation you can write as assuming the axisymmetric flow u del t by del x okay, plus v del t by del r is equal to alpha del 2 t by del x square plus 1 by r del of del r r into del t by del r. So, now let us invoke all these assumptions in this energy equation and let us simplify it. First let us write the uniform velocity profile. So, first let us write the fully developed velocity profile. So, fully developed velocity profile for circular pipe what is that? So, u is function of r only right in this particular case. So, u r is twice mean velocity into 1 minus r square by r naught square. Okay. And similarly, for uniform wall heat flux boundary condition, you can write del t by del x is equal to constant and hence del 2 t by del x square will be 0. That means, axial heat conduction will be 0 in this particular case or in this thermal boundary condition where q double prime w is equal to constant. So, for constant or uniform for uniform wall heat flux boundary condition ok you can write del t by del x is equal to d t m by d x is equal to q double prime w which is constant p is the constant m dot is constant c p is constant. So, that means this is equal to constant hence your axial heat conduction del 2 t by del x square is equal to 0. Okay. So, and for hydrodynamically fully developed flow v is equal to 0. So, you can see here v is equal to 0 and del 2 t by del x square is equal to 0. So, you can write invoking this condition the energy equation as u del t by del x is equal to alpha by r del of del r r del t by del r. Okay. So, now del t by del x you can put this value. Okay. So, if you put this value, so what you will get? So, you can write u is the velocity profile, you put this one. So, it will be twice u m into 1 minus r square by r naught square. Okay. Then del t by del x, so this is your q double prime w p by m dot C p. Okay. Alpha you just take in this side, so 1 by alpha and also r you take in this side. So, r is equal to del of del r, r into del t by del r. Okay. So, now in the left hand side let us simplify it. So, you can see you have u m by alpha 
q double prime w p divided by m dot c p. Okay. So, you can write u m what is alpha? Alpha is k by rho c p okay, into q double prime w what is p? p is the perimeter. So, for this particular case for this pipe of radius r naught it is twice pi r naught okay, divided by m dot c p. So, m dot is rho into u m the area is pi r naught square okay, into c p. So, you can see if you simplify it. So, this rho c p rho c p will get cancelled u m u m pi pi okay, and one r naught. So, you can write this as twice q double prime w by k r naught. Okay. So, this equation now you can write. So, first let us write del of del r into r del t by del r. Okay. So, you can write this. So, 1 2 is here another 2. So, it will be 4 q double prime w divided by k r naught. Okay. Here 1 r is there and we will multiply with this. So, you will write r minus r cube by r naught square. So, this equation now if we integrate twice then you will be able to find the temperature distribution. So, now this differential equation will integrate twice and find the temperature distribution inside the pipe. So, what is your equation finally we got? So, that is your del of del r into r del t by del r is equal to 4 q double prime w by k r naught into r minus r cube by r naught square. Okay. So, you integrate twice. So, first time if you integrate then you will get r del t by del r as 4 q double prime w by k r naught. Okay. It will be r square by 2, it will be r to the power 4 by 4 r naught square. Okay and you divide by r both side then you will get 4 q double prime w by k r naught. So, if you divide by r, so it will be r by 2 minus r cube by 4 r naught square. Okay. So, you can write the constant c 1 which may be function of x plus c 1 by r. So, now another time if you integrate, so you will get t which is function of x and r you will get 4 q double prime w by k r naught into r square by 4 minus r to the power 4 by 4. So, 4 into 4 will be 16 r naught square plus c 1 ln r plus c 2 which will be function of x. So, this is the temperature distribution we got with the two integration constants c 1 and c 2. So, we need two boundary conditions. One boundary condition is that at central line r is equal to 0 you have finite temperature and at r is equal to r naught you have wall temperature T w. So, boundary conditions if you put boundary conditions. So, at r is equal to 0 T is finite right. So, if you see in this equation if you put r is equal to 0. So, to have left hand side t finite c 1 must be 0. So, c 1 is 0 and at r is equal to r naught t is t w okay, which is function of x. So, if you put it that, so t w okay, you can write as, so r is equal to r naught. So, 4 q double prime w by k r naught into r naught square by 4 minus r naught to the power 4 by 16 r naught square c 1 is 0 and c 2. Okay. So, you can find c 2 as t w which is function of x minus if you rearrange. So, it will be 3 by uh, 16 and here 4 is there. So, you will get 3 by 4 okay. and r naught square will be outside. So, 1 r naught will get cancelled. So, you can write q double prime w r naught by so, final temperature distribution now you can write T x r putting the constant c 1 and c 2 you can write as 4 q double prime w by k r naught 
r square by 4 minus r to the power 4 by 16 r naught square okay, plus T w minus 3 by 4 q double prime w r naught by k. So, if you rearrange it you can write it as T w x minus T x r as 3 by 4 3 by 4 q double prime w r naught by k. Okay, if you take this one outside, so it will be 1 minus 4 by 3 r square by r naught square plus 1 by 3 r to the power 4 by r naught to the power 4. Now, we will find the center line temperature putting the r is equal to 0. So, at r is equal to 0, T is equal to T c, okay, which is function of x. So, if you write it, so you will get T w x minus T c x. So, you can see that right hand side, if you put r is equal to 0, all other term will get 0. So, you will get 3 by 4 q double prime w r naught by k. Okay, so, this is your center line temperature distribution. Now, you can also write the final temperature distribution T w x minus T r x divided by divided by T w x minus T c x okay, as 1 minus 4 by 3 r square by r naught square plus 1 by 3 r to the power 4 by r naught to the power 4. Okay. So, this is your temperature distribution. So, next we will find the mean temperature okay, to find the Nusselt number. So, now let us calculate the mean temperature. So, that you can calculate T m x as 1 by m dot integral over the area rho u t d a. Okay. So, if you consider this elemental flow area okay, d a at a distance r of distance d r. So, d a will be your twice pi r d r okay, and what will be the flow area? It will be pi r naught square. Okay. So, if you put it here, so you will get you see you will get T m x so, 1 by m dot will be 1 by rho u m into area pi r naught square integral over the area. So, that will be rho u is twice u m into 1 minus r square by r naught square, then temperature distribution. Okay. So, temperature distribution is T w minus 3 by 4 q double prime w r naught by k into 1 minus 4 by 3 r square by r naught square plus 1 by 3 r to the power 4 by r naught to the power 4 okay, into d a, d a is twice pi r d r. So, it will be twice pi r d r. Okay. So, this u m, u m is constant, rho is constant, pi pi will get cancel. So, you can write it as you see these two and another two 4 4 by r naught square okay outside the integral you will integrate 0 to r naught 0 to r naught okay so this you can see 1 r is here okay 1 r is here so this r if you multiply with this term so it will be r minus r cube by r naught square so and you multiply with tw so, it will be T w into r minus r cube by r naught square. Okay. Now, this r minus r cube by r naught square you multiply with this term. Okay. So, you will get 3 by 4 q double prime w r naught by k. Okay. Now, we are multiplying with 1 okay so uh, means r 
Okay, so it will be r minus 4 by 3 r cube by r naught square plus 1 by 3 r to the power 5 by r to the r naught to the power 4. Now, minus r cube by r naught square. So, it will be minus r cube by r naught square then it will be plus 4 by 3. So, it will be r to the power 5 by r naught to the power 4 okay, minus 1 by 3 r to the power 7 by r naught to the power 6. So, we have written in this form because it will be easier to integrate into dr. Okay, so, now you integrate it. So, it will be 4 by r naught square. So, T w it will be r square by 2 minus r to the power 4 by 4 r naught square okay. minus 3 by 4 q double prime w r naught by k. Now, it will be r square by 2 minus 4 by 3 r to the power 4 by 4 r naught square plus 1 by 3 r to the power 6 by 6 r naught to the power 4 minus r to the power 4 by 4 r naught square plus 4 by 3 r to the power 6 by 6 r naught to the power 4 minus 1 by 3 r to the power 8 by 8 r naught to the power 6. Okay? And what is the limit? 0 to r naught. Okay? So, if you put r is equal to 0, all terms will become 0. So, you put just upper limit r is equal to r naught and uh, rearrange it. So, what you will get 4 by r naught square. So, we are putting r naught, r is equal to r naught. So, you will get, so you multiply with 4 by r naught square with these terms. So, it will be T w, if you put r naught square by 2, so it will be r naught square, you can take it outside, it will be half minus 1 by 4 and minus 3 by 4 q double prime w r naught by k and 4 by r naught square you multiply it. Okay. Then you will get you see everywhere you will get r naught square okay. 4 by 2 6 by 4. So, all you will get r naught square. So, you take r naught square outside. So, you will get half minus 1 by 3 because this 4 4 will cancel then plus 1 by 18, then will be minus 1 by 4, it will be 2 by 9 okay, and minus 1 by 24. So, you simplify it. So, this r naught square, r naught square will cancel. This is half minus 1 by 4. So, it will be 1 by 4. So, only T w will remain here and here r naught square, r naught square 4, 4. Okay. So, you can write it now as T w okay, which is function of x then minus 3 q double prime w r naught by k okay, and this if you see it will be 72. So, it will be 36 then minus 24 then plus 4 minus 18 plus 16 and minus 3. Okay. So, you will get T w x minus 3 q double prime w r naught by k. So, if you rearrange it, it will be 11 by 72, 11 by 72. So, you can see this will be uh, 24. So, you can write this as T w x minus 11 by 24 q double prime w r naught by k. Okay. So, you can write that temperature difference T w x minus T m x as 11 by 24 into q double prime w r naught by k. 
So, now you are in a position to calculate the heat transfer coefficient right because you can calculate Q double prime W minus the temperature difference between wall temperature and mean temperature. So, we will calculate the heat transfer coefficient H as Q double prime W divided by T W minus T M okay. and that you can write Q double prime W T W minus T M you know right 11 by 24 into Q double prime W divided by Q double prime W R naught by K. Okay. So, H will be your 24 by 11 K by R naught. Okay. Hence, now national number you can calculate based on the hydraulic diameter and in this case hydraulic diameter is D which is your 2 R naught. So, it will be H into 2 R naught by K. Okay. So, if you put the value of H, so it will be 24 by 11 K by R naught twice R naught by K. So, you can see R naught R naught K K. So, it will be 24 into 2. So, it will be 48 by 11. Okay. So, national number based on the diameter it is 4.36. Okay. So, you can see in this also particular case your national number is independent of Reynolds number and Pendle number and it is constant. So, thermally and hydrodynamically fully developed flow in a circular pipe your national number is 4.36 and which is constant. So, let us summarize what we have done in today's class. Today we consider two different types of duct, one is parallel plate channel and second is circular pipe. We consider hydrodynamically and thermally fully developed flow with uniform wall heat flux boundary condition. In both the cases first we have found the temperature distribution. You can see that we know the fully developed velocity profile putting, putting it in the energy equation with and integrating the equation we got the temperature profile and you can see here the temperature distribution for parallel plates this one and for the circular pipe is this one. We have represented this temperature which is fu function of x and r in terms of the wall temperature which is function of x. Then we found the mean temperature right in both the cases. So, you can see for the parallel plate channel your mean temperature is T m x minus T w x minus 17 by 35 Q double prime w h by k and whereas, in circular pipe it is T m x is equal to T w x minus 11 by 24 Q double prime w R naught by k. So, now we know the temperature difference between wall temperature and the mean temperature. Hence, you can calculate the heat transfer coefficient and you can see that for parallel plate channel heat transfer coefficient is 35 by 17 K by H. In case of circular pipe H is 24 by 11 K by R naught. Then from heat transfer coefficient we calculated the Nusselt number and we have seen in both the cases Nusselt number is constant and independent of Reynolds number and panel number. So, when you consider thermally and hydrodynamically fully developed flow for uniform wall heat flux boundary condition, national number for parallel plate channel we calculated as 8.24 and for circular pipe we calculated as 4.36. Okay. In last lecture we calculated the national number for thermally fully developed slug flow with uniform wall heat flux boundary condition and we found the nusselt number for parallel plate channel as 12 and for circular pipe as 18, 8. So, you can see that when you consider the fully developed velocity profile then it is 8.24, but when you consider slug flow where you have the everywhere you have the same velocity u m. So, in that case you get higher national number in both the cases. That means, when you have fully developed velocity profile that means, your velocity is decreasing towards the wall. So, obviously, you are getting less heat transfer compared to the 
slug flow because in slug flow you have the velocity is same near to the wall as near to the center line. So, velocity is higher, so you are getting higher heat transfer rate. So, that can be found from this uh, expression national number 12 and national number 8 for circular pipe. 